What up, y'all? It's DJ MV. And I am Gia Casey. And this is another edition of the Casey Crew. Welcome. But like, like we promised, we said we were going to start filming some of our podcasts so people can actually see see some of our uh, reactions, descriptions, and all that. It would have been nice if you would have given me more of an hour notice before telling me that we were going to be filming our podcast today, but it's okay. I'm not going to hold a grudge against you. I actually forgot. So, yeah, turn the mic, baby. I actually forgot. Um, and then uh, Revolt came and said, hey, we're coming to your house to tape. And I was like, oh, shit, I got to tell Gia. <laughs> and I was like, Gia, can we tape today? She was like, no, I got to get my hair done. I'm like, Ugh. I'm like, please. She was like, no, this is still the same braids from vacation. So I have to get my hair done. I was like, well, they're on their way. No, actually, you said, well, put on a hat. I did say I'm put like, on a hat. so I'm supposed to put on a fitted over cornrows. Yes. I don't think that really play out too well. Yeah, but well, you you, you did your hair. It looks good. It, it, there's nothing nothing wrong with it. Listen, it is what it is. It looks good. It looks bad. It looks high. Whatever. And let me tell the people out there, November 3rd, I want you all to know, November 3rd, I'm having my first car show, and I'm super duper excited about this. Now, the car show is going down in New Jersey, Secaucus, New Jersey. It's uh, six, seven hours of family fun. So I want you to come on out. I want you to get tickets. I want you to bring the family. Kids under five are free, so it's eventbrite.com. Uh, search DJ Envy, and it'll pop right up. Uh, over 150 cars, celebrity cars, 50 cents bringing his cars, with Beats, uh, Fabulous. Some performances. Yeah, performances as well. So come on out. We're going to have uh, jumpies for kids. We're going to have face painting. Stilt walkers if I have my way. Gia I want stilt, stilt walkers. walkers. I've never seen a stilt walker at a car show. But, so, but it's a Casey Crew car show. Okay. Yeah, you're so. right. So stilt walkers. Gia, mimes. Mimes. I want some mimes. Gia will be there. The kids will be there. Mm-hmm. It'll be a lot of fun. So, you know, tickets right now are $20. Uh, I think at the end of the week, uh, they go up and then they're more at the door. So right now, tickets are only $20. I'm just trying to keep it affordable and very fun for everybody out there it's gonna be a family day and we're doing it and gear is actually designing some of this so it went from being very cheap to very expensive <laughs> Gia started wanting red carpets, red velvet ropes. And she went, Gia asked for a VIP section. I've never seen a VIP section in a car show, but Gia wants a VIP section. She's yes. like, if I'm going to be here for two, three hours, I want the option to buy bottles and chill in a section and just relax. I'm like, I think that there are people that will show up, plan on being there for a few hours, maybe not just an hour. They might want to be able to sit down, relax, have a little drinky poo and chill out with their family or the people that they came with. I think that we should offer that. Well, we'll we'll see. We'll yes. we'll see if we can get that going. So it'd be dope. Again, I got my fingers in it. Get your tickets at eventbrite.com or you could click the link in my bio and then pick up some tickets. We're gonna have a lot of fun. Like I said, the whole family will be there. Even little Brookie will be there. Right? Brookie will be there. Brookie will be there. She's the star of the she show. She'll be jumping on hoods and stuff, but all right, she messed up my car. She I got hurt. some ideas. It's gonna be dope. All right. Um, so let's start off the show with what we've been doing. I mean, we haven't really been telling people. So let's get no, into we, it. You said we haven't really. We haven't been right. telling people. Well, let me tell them what first. What we're doing, and the, there's a reason. The guy's outside cutting grass right now, as we were doing this podcast. So if you hear a little humming noise, he's out there cutting the grass. I told him how long he was going to be. He said like ten minutes. So you might hear <laughs> so hum if you hear for a 10 humming minutes, noise. If you hear light humming that's noise, that's what it is. Because homie and is out there. We're at our home. Yeah. This is the bar, right? In our home. So, so I, I see. It sounds like homie's getting a little closer. But anyway, um, if you don't know. We have been trying to have a six baby. Yes. And all the other babies came very easy and very fast. Right. I mean, I shoot Gia's club up. Come on, dude. Nine months later, she's pregnant. I mean, that's usually how it works. Yeah, I mean, but it's, it's, been, it's, been, it's been that easy. I, you know, it's my pullout game is weak. But for this last baby, we haven't been able to conceive. conceive. And but we don't know why. So uh, we decided to go to a doctor. Well, originally I went to my gynecologist and I said, you know what? We've been having sex frequently, right? <laughs> like we usually do. And deliberately around the time that I should be ovulating. Correct. And for some reason I haven't gotten pregnant with every other baby. We got pregnant immediately. Right. One, two, three. Like for instance, London and Jackson were both conceived Exactly a year apart at the iHeart Music Festival Correct. in Vegas. Right. Because I, I'm very regular and I was ovulating at the same time each year. Right. And we knew it. We I were planning we were boom. planning both of those babies and got pregnant the first time out the gate. Absolutely. Easy breezy. And all the other kids. Easy breezy. Boom, boom, boom. This time, literally, 
I don't know if you guys remember, I'm sure a lot of you remember, there was a podcast where Rashawn hit me upside the head with, I want to have another baby. Correct. And there was no pillow talk about it days before. It was like a new notion to me, a new idea. And we pretty much hashed it out with you guys on the podcast. Right. So literally, I don't remember how long ago that was, maybe eight months, nine months, 10 months, Mm -hmm. something like that. I said yes. And since that week, literally, we've been trying to have a baby. Right. And no nothing. Nothing. No nothing. Not even a nothing. I went to see my gynecologist and she said, you know, realistically, every other pregnancy that you've gotten pregnant so easily kind of went against the odds. It's not as easy to get pregnant as you've been experiencing in the past. Correct. She said there could be a number of reasons. Um, I'm not going to run through the list, but there could be a number of reasons. So she said, the first thing that I want to do is have you checked out. Let's check everything and make sure that everything is working properly for you and Rashawn. Right. And if so, we're going to kind of put a little juju on it and make this pregnancy happen. So they always want to blame it on the guy. They always say the guy's sperm is fucked up. So (laughs) they had to check my sperm first, right? Mm Mm-hmm. So... Now did mind, they check yours first? Yeah, they checked mine first. Okay. Now, mind you, I was kind of nervous because when I take long flights, like, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to tell you some real shit. I <laughs> when I take long flights, I take edibles. Uh-huh. The candy edibles. Right. And it puts me to sleep fast. Mm-hmm. Like, high to sleep. So, you know, they say that when you take weed or edibles, it kills your sperm. Mm-hmm. So I was like, damn, my sperm. I don't know if that's true. That's what they say. It's, it's a rumor, that's right? A, that's, that's what they say. Uh-huh. So now, all right, I had to go give them a test, so. To give them a test, you pretty much have to wank off in a cup. <laughs> and it's the most embarrassing thing ever. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you, 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 schedule, the mood. You, you schedule an appointment. And I didn't schedule an appointment because I didn't want them to know I was coming. You didn't want them to know you was coming? Not like that. But they you know knew you mean. were coming. Not like that. I didn't want them to know. <laughs> they knew you were coming. Because people know who I am in that area. So I didn't want to I didn't want to say, okay, Envy's uh, coming to give this sperm. Like. So I, I just so you know what they're waiting outside the door right. for you with cameras right. and iPhones. Well, not camera and iPhones, but I just didn't. I felt uncomfortable, uh-huh. so I just popped up, and um, <laughs> there's a, there's a jerk off room, uh-huh. right? It's the weirdest thing. So if you could if you could imagine a jerk off room, they got a room and they got a couch, a chair, and they got porn on the TV. Right, right. And you had options. I, well, no, I didn't have options because when I got there, there was three people ahead of me. So now there's three guys standing there, sitting there with a cup in their hand, right? right. And it's just so awkward and so uncomfortable, uh-huh. right? So the guy was like, the doctor or the doctor, whatever he was, the physician or nurse or whatever, he was like, it's going to be a little bit of time. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, ah. it just felt nasty. Like you, you, one guy wanks off in the room, then they clean the room, then another guy wanks off in the room, <laughs> then they clean right, the room, right, right, then right, another right. guy. So I said, uh-huh. I, I, said yo, just, I said, yo, just give me the cup. He's like, all right, what you going to do? I said, yo, I'm just going to go in the bathroom. Mm-hmm. So I went into this, this, like, you know, it was a hospital. So it was a sterile, nasty Well, it's bathroom. not, it's not um, a hospital. It's a doctor's it's like, office. It's like a doctor's office yeah, slash. But, but kind of like a hospital too. Yeah, I guess. It's, I guess not, I, it's, it's more of a doctor's so office. So it's, it's a sterile, like white, white <laughs> tile room. So yeah, I, yeah, yeah. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to, I'm a, I'm a, I got a stash of naked pictures of you on my phone. So it's like, yo, I'm a, I'm a open up the stash of naked pictures. But what happens is, it's actually on the iCloud. So you have no service down there because it's like the bottom floor. So there's no service. Wait. I raced them since there. Don't worry about it. I raced them since iCloud? Then. Yeah. That means it's like No, nah, I raced it. I raced out it. Out there, it. I, no? It was, it was, but I raced it. So then I was like, all right, I'm going to watch some porn. But I just told you there's no service. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So now they have magazines in the bathroom. <laughs> but there's no chair or nothing. So now I got to sit there and try to wink off. Nobody, nobody. Oh, yeah. Now I got to sit there and try to wink off. And when I say I busted the the littlest amount of nut ever. <laughs> just enough for the sample. It was so disrespectful. <laughs> and like, and I had to work for it because they don't, and I'm just telling you out there, so fellas, if you ever have to do this, they give, you can't use lotion. Like my go-to lotion is a vino. Shout out to a vino out there. Vino works, right? But they, and they don't give you oil. They don't give you baby oil. oil. Baby oil works too. But they give you some, it's like a. It's mineral oil. It's mineral oil. Now mineral oil don't work for shit. It absorbs on your penis immediately. So it, it's like, it was bad. It's like a jerk off man. It was. Right I'm, now. I'm just telling. I'm telling yes. the guys out there. So if they ever the have vino go, is great. They know. What However, to do. on the other hand, they give you this nasty mineral, oil. mineral oil that you're out there jerking for. Like it took me like a long time, mm-hmm. and I'm not gonna lie. I was doing everything. I was rubbing my nipple. <laughs> 
I was I was imagining all types of stuff. Rubbing, I, like, I could not. I could not. And then when I finally come, I looked in the cup and it was so little. I was like, oh, man. <laughs> you, did you feel like a failure? I did feel like a failure. Well, all the other men that go into the room have options. There's right. like... Chinese porn. Oh, let me tell them. Let me tell them. <laughs> so, th- so that one. So I, we, I handed that that cup in. They checked it, and it worked. Right, no problem. Th- and they said my sperm was good. I had to go back to give another sperm sample. So this time I decided to wait. So now this time I got into the room. Mm-hmm. Now you could tell who's in the room, right? Because it's nothing but like black dudes destroying white girls. It was like let's say there was. 12 porns. Wait, wait, wait. Is that the thing? They, BBD? No, Big Black. No, BBC. What's B- BBC? Big Black Cock. Not Big Black Dick. Big Black Cock. Excuse the hell out of me. Uh, yeah, like, <laughs> I'm sorry. That's not in my Rolodex of fantasies. All right. So Go anyway, ahead. so it was like eight of them was like BBCs. Mm-hmm. Like big black guys knocking out white girls, right? Mm-hmm. Two of them was... So that means, hold on. Let's just put this in perspective. That means that the guys that are going in there to wank off are watching... BBCs hit off <laughs> Caucasian women. Right. That's like, that's th- their fantasy. That's a thing. I mean, I would have thought that and maybe it was a fantasy that white women might No, no, no. That's watch. a thing. Like, a lot of white men... I wouldn't think that white men no, would be watching... That's a thing. They Like, white men like to have big black dudes knock off their women. Like, that's a Sidebar, thing. sidebar. Can I just draw a connection? Kind of like what Major Hype said... On the live podcast, yes, that's a thing. that the guy gave him um, $1,500 to watch him have sex with his wife. I think it's called hot wife. Like people like that. Yes, they they like big black cocks to knock off their women. Like like white men like that. They like uh, it's, it's a thing. But Apparently. So, so that okay. was so now that, that was one of the selections. That was eight of the selections. <laughs> Go ahead. What else? Two of the selections was Asian, mm-hmm. like Asian massages and then wanky, 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 wanky. And then, uh, (laughs) one of them was MILF, like a a, a white woman with big titties. You told me one of them was, um, like stepbrother, stepsister, step, stepbrother, stepsister. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there was one Latino one and that was it. That was it. Oh, and one Ebony girl. There was one Ebony girl and one Latino one. Mm hmm. And the reason I know is I went through all of them because I was trying to set the mood for myself. Right, right. So I tried to, so it was, it was a little more difficult. It was easier because I just went through all, I, I was going through all of them, like hitting the thing. So whoever touched that remote control after me, it got a slimy remote control. Oh, let me tell you this, man. And this, so now, right, with this one, oh, this why is a, this are you so nasty? I'm just telling you, I'm telling you. God. Slimy remote control. It was a slimy remote. So this one, <laughs> this one, I, so you, I, I had, no, this is this is CMI, but I had to do it in the cup, right? Not off in the cup. So mm-hmm. I'm going to the cup, going to the cup. I was going so hard so I could get so much. I swear to God, I almost had a heart attack. After I, I nut, my my chest started hurting. <laughs> and my chest been hurting ever since. <laughs> Shut I, I, up, swear, I swear. Okay, don't swear because I don't believe no, you. No, I swear. Like, I, I nut. I, I heard a story that a guy can nut so hard that he has a heart attack. And I thought. You know, you hear a lot of stories. I'm I just do, letting you know. I, I, like, you true. hear a lot of stories. It's true. And I nut and I almost, I thought I was having a heart attack. And I was like, this would be the death of me. I'll die. And they'd be like, Envy was was nutting off, wanking off, and die wanking off. Like, that's Wait, hold on. Is that a good thing? Or it, like, it was so good that... Your hand was so good that you died? No, that like, like if it, it was, sped up your heartbeat no, so was, much. That your hand did it, right? If it was vagina, then that's some, that's, that's some dope shit. You, I mean, but regardless of what was causing the friction, it felt good, no? If I died in your vagina, that's one of the things. Like, yo, my vagina was so good, I killed this Okay, man. we're not talking about bragging rights. I'm just talking about how it felt. No. So are you saying that that was a good thing? Like, oh, it no, no, it so wasn't good. good. I think, no, I think I strained so much, I almost had a heart attack. You, The way that you describe it made me makes me feel like your wee-wee was raw it when might you were have been. done. But anyway, I, I got the, the come out. Okay, was it more than the first sample? Way more, yeah. It was way more. It was <laughs> shitload more. Because you because you weren't standing up in a white sterile bathroom? I think so. But the good thing about it, my sperm was good. Your sperm was good. My sperm was good. So Your was, sperm was good. So it wasn't me. You produced, I think, double the average amount of good sperm. Good sperm meaning sperm that swims straight because there are sperm that... Swim to the left or swim to the right. All you right. weed smokers, your sperms, your sw- your sperms swim to the left. Swims crooked. <laughs> then there are some that don't swim at all. Mm-hmm. They separate the debris. Mm-hmm. They call it debris from the good swimmers. So they pull out all of the good swimmers 
and they separate the debris and then they keep that as the sample. So what we decided to do, there was two options. We could have done intrauterine insemination, which is otherwise known as IUI, or we could have done in vitro. And we sat on that decision for a couple of months. Oh, you did. I didn't. I would because in vitro costs money. I mean, so does intrauterine insemination. Right. But I, that's why we sat on it for a couple of months because I figured if I keep nothing in you, something got to catch before we got to pay. Yeah, so he, he kept trying. He's like, when are you ovulating? Go get a kit. You got a kit? Did you pee on the stick? Are you ovulating? Because he kept wanting to do it naturally. Now, here's the thing Could we have gotten pregnant naturally? Yes. I just didn't want to wait. It's not as though there was a problem with his sperm. My sperm was good money. You just want, you want to hammer that home, right? My sperm was good money. And there was nothing wrong with my body. Your eggs was good money. They did a test where they shot dye into my vaginal canal and then into my uterus. And this is a male doctor that does that. We got to have a conversation about that. Like, I'm I try, love my I kept doctor. To think how, how do how do I feel about a He's male so doctor nice. all in the vagina like that? Like, because that's kind of weird. I need no. you to give me a break. Would you, I need would, you to if give I had me a, doc, a female doctor, her I face was care. in my crotch. You wouldn't care. I wouldn't care. Rather right, she had to smell like smell my. I my don't ass care. I wouldn't care. All right, go ahead. And she would she would care. She had to smell your ass. But <laughs> you have, yo, if you want to do it, right, <laughs> it's up right, to you. Right. Um, but they shot dye into my fallopian tubes to see if there was any blockages or any problems and they monitor it. So Mm -hmm. it was a whole procedure. So both of us had to be tested and there was nothing wrong. Right. Everything physiologically was just as it should be. Everything was good. So it kind of just, I guess, laid in the realm of chances and percentages Mm -hmm. of pregnancy. And to be honest, we're older than we were when we first conceived. So that plays a role most of the time. Correct. So everything wound up being okay. So anyway, we had two choices, intrauterine insemination or in vitro. Now, yes, they both cost money. Right. One in- is way more than the other. One's way more and than the other. insurance don't cover. I just want to let y'all know, insurance does not well, cover that. Well, you can't say that. Our insurance, Our insurance don't cover. doesn't cover infertility. DJ insurance sucks, so they don't cover nothing. <laughs> Some people's insurance, I know You only women. get one cavity a year. You get another cavity, you're on your own. Okay. <laughs> I know some women that went through in vitro and their insurance either covered it completely or covered a part of it. Really? Yes. Wow. But ours doesn't cover anything. So everything was out of pocket. So yes, you were playing cheap for a minute, Mm -hmm. but intrauterine insemination is a lot less. So basically what that is, is they take his sperm... The good sperm. So they go through my sperm. The good that, sperm. That the one big without the debris. The pound of sperm that I gave them. They the, go through and the get, good get the healthy sperm. The good swimmers. Right. They hold that. And then they give me drugs. Those drugs in the form of pills for intrauterine insemination, in the form of pills, causes me to produce more eggs. Or it should. Correct. So it's five pills that you take five days leading up to when you're supposed to ovulate. And it's supposed to produce more than one egg. Right. For me, I still produced one egg. One egg. And the reason is because usually people might go through one or two, three, four cycles of this before they get pregnant. So they use the first cycle kind of as like a test cycle to see how many of those pills you would need to produce more eggs. Right. Now... According to my doctor, I probably would have taken two pills a day and that would have produced two eggs, right. which would mean that when they inseminated me, and I'll explain a little bit more about that. Hold, hold on one second, because the, the guy's right near the front door right now. Like, he's playing with me right now. Like, he's like, I'm going to stay you by the front door. You guys hear landscapers? I can hear the landscaper. Like, he's right there by the front door. Like, you can't be blowing the front door for that long, man. It's like he wants to see him peek. I ain't naked. They, I think they can hear. All right, now you can go. Okay, just, just pardon him for a moment. Okay. Um, what was I saying? You were saying uh, okay. you got a, the, the turkey, the turkey baster. <laughs> it's not a friggin' turkey. I need you to stop referring to it as a turkey baster. All right, good. They put the turkey baster in. in no, in your- no, 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 no. So I'm supposed to produce, say, more than one egg. Correct. So they determined that I would probably take two pills a day, meaning ten that would cause me to have maybe two eggs by the time that I ovulate. And we're telling you all this stuff because I know a lot of women are having fertility problems and people are having fertility problems, want kids and don't know what to do, don't know the process. So since we've been through it or we're going through it, we are explaining it. Okay. And also, sidebar, 
usually, and for, for usually for most women and for all of our pregnancies, mm-hmm. we didn't let anyone know, not even our parents or right. anything that we were pregnant until three months after the pregnancy. Right. Because usually that's kind of like the safe zone. That's right. the point where you feel comfortable knowing that your pregnancy is sustaining mm-hmm. and the baby will come to full term. Correct. This time we don't know what's going to happen. But we're going to take you along the journey because that's really what this podcast is about. Absolutely. So you'll know it as we know it. So anyway, if I were to have taken the 10 pills that apparently my body would have needed, I could have ended up with two eggs. And then when they inseminated me with the sperm that Rashawn provided, there's a chance that we could wind up with twins. Right. But... I only produced one egg because apparently the drugs weren't strong enough. Right. So I went in and they inseminated me. Basically, they put his sperm in a syringe. A turkey baster. In a syringe. A turkey baster. Go ahead. Type thing connected to a catheter. And they allow it to travel up your vaginal canal, through your cervix, into like your uterine cavity, if you will. And then they dispense the sperm. They let it go. And then all that the sperm has to do, all the good swimmers have to do is travel up the fallopian tubes and find the egg. Correct. Now, prior to that, I get a shot that I have to give myself that Rashawn wouldn't give me. Hell no. He to- he flat out told me no. Hell. So Irma had to give me a shot in my stomach. Yeah. A sh- could you imagine a shot in your stomach? Mm-hmm. Like that's like. I, I, I it wasn't you, that bad. I give you a shot in your arm. I give it you a shot in your bad. ass. But in the stomach. Oh my God. I couldn't even watch it. And that shot was to bring on ovulation. So you go in every day almost leading up to when you're supposed to be ovulating. They're taking your blood. They're doing an ultrasound. And they want to pinpoint exactly when you're supposed to be ovulating. Mm -hmm. They give you a trigger shot. It sends you into ovulation. They kind of test you. You go in at the appropriate time and then they inseminate you. Correct. So that was right before we went to Miami. Correct. For vacation. Mm-hmm. So the whole time, like we're sitting there on pin, pins and needles, like, are we pregnant? Are we pregnant? Are we pregnant? So today is the day that my doctor told me if you don't have your period by the 22nd, which is today, we're taping this on Tuesday, it's going to come out tomorrow on Wednesday. Right. If you don't have it by the 22nd, come in on the 23rd for a pregnancy test. Correct. So. We'll see what happens. So we'll see what happens. But I'm going to be real with you. I think that I'm pregnant. Oh, boy. And the re- and I could be wrong. I could be coming back to you next week like, yeah, it was all in my head. But when I have my period, like my period's very, very Light. easy breezy. Correct. It only lasts about maybe two and a half days. I never get any cramps or anything. And it's very, very light. And it's been like that my entire life. So when I do get my period, there's only one sign. There's only one indicator. And it's a strange little feeling that I feel in my uterus. Mm -hmm. It's not pain. It's not tugging. It's just a strange feeling. That's the best way I can explain it. And about two hours after I feel that feeling, I get my period every single month. So a few days ago, I started feeling that feeling, but typically I only feel it once. I was feeling it day after day after day, not consistently, but maybe once or twice a day I'm getting that sensation. So I said to myself, that should mean that something's going on because that's not a feeling that I usually feel. So something's going on in my uterus. I don't know if it's good or bad, but something's going on in there. So I Googled it. I said, you know, basically in the search bar, I said, does... Uterine feelings, you know, eight to 10 days after blah, 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 indicate pregnancy. Mm -hmm. And all these articles and information came up. And basically, there's something called implantation cramps. Mm -hmm. Basically, if the egg is fertilized and, well, I should say once it's fertilized, it travels to the uterus and then the egg pretty much buries itself into the uterine wall to protect itself. And like, that's its cozy spot. Right. So I was having this feeling, which I think for maybe some women is conveyed as cramps. For me, it's not a cramp. It's just a feeling. And I was feeling that. So for me, I think that maybe I'm pregnant. But we'll see. I mean, I hope we'll so. We'll see tomorrow. I hope so. We'll and, see tomorrow. And if not, I'll just keep shooting the club up some more, some more, some more until we figure it out. 
Yeah. So I'm a little worried because um, one of the podcasts quite some time ago, we told you that we had a miscarriage before, right before Brookie. Uh-huh. And sometime before that, I was pregnant. I took a test. It showed that I was pregnant. And then when I went to my doctor the following week, it showed that I wasn't. Right. Come to find out that's called a chemical pregnancy. It's pretty much you get pregnant, but then the egg, the fertilized egg isn't viable. Mm -hmm. So it pretty much eliminates itself. So even if the pregnancy test does come back positive tomorrow, Mm -hmm. and he was on me last night basically saying I shouldn't feel this way, but... I kind of don't want to get my hopes up. No, uh, see, you know what I mean. See, like I don't want to get. Even if I do wind up pregnant, you got to think positive. Um, of course, I, positive. of course, I want to think positively. But mm-hmm. I'm thinking, you know, what if it's not a viable pregnancy? What if it eliminates itself? What if we go nine weeks like we did with the other pregnancy? And uh-huh. look, look, he's right by the door I again. Know, he's I know. I right know. Can by we the ignore door. him? All right, I'm sorry. He's go gonna ahead. go away. Okay, okay. You can relax. Ahead. They understand. Okay. okay? Mm-hmm. And what if you know we go nine weeks and. I miscarry, right? You know, so try again. there really is something to waiting a little bit of time before you share the news with friends, family, for us, you guys. Um, but we're doing it anyway, right? So they're there you have a, it. They're taking the journey with us. So hopefully, if and you guys are taking the journey, you understand, and you don't have to be embarrassed. And it is what it is. This it's, it's the game of life. And the reason is because you know we really feel as though a lot of women go through infertility or difficulty conceiving. So we just want to make sure that we share our life experience, our truth with you guys so that, you know, not only to provide um, information, but to provide comfort to know that other people are going through the same thing that you might be going through. Absolutely. So wish us the best of luck. And then hopefully we give you some good updates next week. Yes. This week's podcast is brought to you by Kind Snacks. When it comes to packing your kids' lunchbox in the morning, the struggle is real. You might not have time to cut fruit in star shapes, but you can still be a hero with Kind Kids Bars. Now, Kind Kids Bars have 25% less sugar than the leading kids granola bar and come in flavors kids love, like chewy chocolate chip and chewy honey oat. Now, to get 20% off your order of Kind Kids Bars, go to kindsnacks.com slash Crew and enter code KC crew at checkout that's k-i-n-d-s-n-a-c-k-s dot com slash casey crew with code casey crew to check out for this special offer all right well let's get to the email of the week okay all right uh is he a coward should i be with him that is the uh the the liner the headline i was gonna say hello dj envy and gear i would like to be anonymous i absolutely love your podcast it gives me so much life inspiration and parenting tips for my five-year-old well let's get right to it I've been dating a guy since November 2017. He has two children, both girls 10 and 11. He was married five years and newly single when I met him. He was damaged, broken, and had so much baggage. He didn't have a job, a car, or a place to live. Well, I have my own business and working on a second, so I would say I'm doing pretty well. I have a house and a car. He and I talked for months before we actually hung out, and in about four months, I fell in love with him. He was a wonderful man and a wonderful father just in a tough situation that I was willing to help him out of. Well, months went by. Things have been good. We have amazing sex life, amazing chemistry, and have the same goals as far as family. He wants marriage again, and I want to be married. The other day, I picked him up from his job that is 45 minutes away from where I live. Then I take him to his second job, then pick him back up and take him home every day. This particular day, he wants to be picked up uh, from his daughter's Mom's house. I told him that I did not feel comfortable because she's still bitter and angry. And I don't want to be put in a situation that will cause drama or potentially be uh, attacked physically. He kept insisting everything would be fine. Well, we get to her house. We wait. And he was looking so nervous. She finally pulls up. She parks. And I see her walking towards my car. So I cracked the window. I'm not a fool. She asked me if I was an Uber driver or was I dating him? Now, I knew her from seventh grade. We went to school together briefly, and I hadn't seen her since. At one point, we were social media friends, but I didn't like her energy. I can't stand women that tell it all on social media. So I unfriended her four years ago. We we were never friends in real life, never even associates. I just knew of her in school. So anyways, after that, she walked away, told me good luck, and walked back to him arguing and saying he was a liar. Apparently... He told her I was the Uber driver because he said he was scared she would not give him the kids. I felt so disrespected and I felt like he was a coward. Mm -hmm. 
I broke things off with him because I told him before even getting his kids, if this causes drama, I'm done with you. I feel like he should have known better and he was being a coward. He's now begging me to forgive him, saying relationships aren't easy and he wants to marry me and marriage isn't easy. Said we should be able to get over this. I don't think I want to deal with this type of drama in my life. I'm so confused. I love him so much and could see myself with him for the rest of my life. But to see him demonstrate such a coward move turned me off completely. Sorry for the long email, but I know Gia loves detail and I'm a specific person too. Thank you. Love you guys. Hope to hear from you soon. Let me go first. If you wish. All right. I don't, I see, I don't necessarily think he's a coward. See, I think this is the situation, right? I'm going to tell you. He wanted, he wants his kids. Obviously, he's done with this girl. He wanted to prove to his new girl that I have nothing going on with this girl. So come with me to the house to pick her up. That's not true. Why? If he wanted to prove to her that he had nothing going on with his ex, then he wouldn't have identified her as the Uber driver. No, he wanted to show his new girl that he had nothing going on with the ex. How would she know if she doesn't know what happened inside the house unless she was introduced as the girlfriend? He wasn't. I didn't want to introduce you right away. He could have knocked his ex off in the house and came out and got into the Uber. What would that have proved to his girlfriend? Plus he was just showing. You know, he was showing his new girl. Nothing. This is where my old girl lives. I'm picking up my kids. As you can see, this bitch is crazy. I'm getting the kids in the car and we leaving. So you can see that there's nothing. You can so see that wasn't the plan. That I, I bitch that is was crazy plan. wasn't part of the plan. I'm sure that was the plan. I'm sure the plan was. You can see that me and her are not a thing. I'm just getting my kids and we're leaving. She can't see anything if she's sitting in the car. No, they both pulled witnessing up. Witnessing from afar. They said they both pulled up. What do you mean they both pulled she up? She said she pulled up and walked over and asked, are you the Uber driver? Right. What opportunity did she have to witness anything? You're saying that he did this to prove something. Yeah. That... She, he proved nothing but for the fact that he does not want to introduce her to his ex. See, no, see, you got to think about it. For who she is. You got to think about it, right? I got a crazy ex, right? Listening, right? I'm not, hold on. Just listen. No, no, wait, wait, wait. I'm not talking about whether he should have or shouldn't have. All I'm talking about is your point to say that he had her pick him up from his ex's house to prove. No, 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 no. She drove her. The new girl drove him to the ex's house to pick up the kids. Whichever way. You said that he did that to prove that he's not proving anything to her. He would have. How, what would that be proving? All right, for instance, all right, if... I'm with, with a new girlfriend and I'm coming here to pick up my kids. And I'm telling my new girl, come on, come with me to pick up my kids. And she's like, no, I don't want to go because I don't want no problems. And I'm like, nah, I'm really not with her. Come on. So I'm telling her to come on while I pick up the kids. I'm coming out to go get the kids, right? Mm-hmm. Now I'm telling my old girl, that's the Uber driver, because right. I don't want her to wild out and be like, oh, you got a new girl. Oh, you got a new girl. I'm not giving you my kids anymore. So that's the game he tried to play. He tried to say, tell his old girl that's the Uber driver, his new girl, whatever it was, and keep it moving. I'm he didn't so, expect his old girl to come into his I'm new I'm talking girl. about your point where you said that he did that to prove to his new girl that there's nothing with the ex-girl. That proves nothing because if she's an Uber driver or she's being introduced as such or taken as such, that proves nothing to her. He would be proving something to her if he introduced one to the other. Nah, you understand? Nah. So you can't introduce one to the I other. I didn't say whether you can or not. Oh. I'm talking about your point no. where you say that he did that to prove to her. No, he did that because he needed the ride. No, no, no. And he wanted to avoid any problems by introducing her or he didn't want to the default. Her. He wanted her to her see. Her default title being the Uber driver. All right, if I, all right, for instance, let's say let's say I have an a, a ex, right? And I'm like, look, my ex is crazy. But I'm really not messing with her. I really want to take it on to an, another relation, another level with you. Mm-hmm. I want you to come with me. I just want you to come with me. Now, I want you to come with me because I want you to see me and her interact so you can see it's nothing spicy. It's nothing going on. That's, I want you to see that I don't give a fuck about this bitch, that I'm just here to pick up my kids and if I'm out here. If you don't give a bleep about that B, then you'll introduce me as your girlfriend. But I have to give a fuck about that bleep because if I don't, she can stop me from seeing my kids. Mm. No. Yes. No. You, you're talking. See, that goes into a guys whole, understand that goes into a whole other thing. No. You know, a woman doesn't crazy. just have the power. Yes, they do. To stop you from seeing your kids. Absolutely. You do. might have to go through a long, treacherous road. It could take years. But they can't just up and stop. Yes, you. they can. Until Unless the court... there's something wrong with your parenting. No. A judge do doesn't just yank 
visitation no, it takes from time. a father. No, it takes time. Unless it can be proved that you're not fit no, 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 as no, no. a father. That's not true. If I want to see my kids, let's say me and you. She can make it difficult. Me and, let's say me and you get a divorce tomorrow, right? And I want to see my kids and you want to be an ass. It's like, no, you're not seeing the kids. I have to go to court to try to see that kid. Yes. And that can take years. You okay, can, I think that's an exaggeration. Because yes, you, you could postpone court dates. It happens to men all no, the time. No, no, no. The process can take years, mm-hmm. but that's usually taking into consideration that the wife, the mother of the child, whatever she was, is telling the courts, telling the judge that you're not fit as a father. Absolutely. That could be there. That could be a lie. It, it, but it's a whole convoluted situation that creates a situation that you're talking about. Right time, now, right. we're just talking about your girlfriend bringing you to pick up your kids. But he doesn't want you're to go through that process. You're just turning it into this whole big thing. Do you see what I'm saying? Absolutely. Because I'm a man. And that's what I men do think. think that it's cowardly. I feel like you pull up your bootstraps... You tell your ex what it is and you deal with the fallout. And you don't sit here throwing around lies and deal making up a whole situation. I don't see my kids for a year. It can get to that. We don't know. I don't want to get to that. We don't know. And it, it doesn't happen like that. You're making it sound so simple. It can. She could close the door and say, never come back to this house. If you want to come back to this house, go to the court. And then that could take time. Happens all the time. You can, it you can, can take the- time, but I'm not saying that it would take a year. But I'm just saying that. So, OK. So what does a man that is not a coward do? A man that's not a coward would say, so-and-so, this is my new girlfriend, so-and-so. I just wanted to introduce you so that you know who might be Nobby. around the children. A man is not a coward. Hold says- on a second. If the ex-girlfriend handles it badly and does what you're saying, then he goes down that road. But at the least, he's not being a coward and having to lie to his ex and hide his new girlfriend and go through life like he can't live his life the way he wants to live because of what she might do. Yes. Who who wants to live like that? Nobody. But women are crazy. If I'm a guy, I'm going to want to be a man Tell her what it is and she's going to have to deal with it. Well, and if she chooses to not go with God and give me an adverse reaction and not let me see my kids and go through the courts and drag me down this treacherous road that I was talking about before, then I would just have to deal with it. I would have to deal with it. But I'm not going to be sitting there letting this other woman run my life, rule my life, tell me what I can and can't do. I can't even have a girlfriend. I got to lie to you and tell you that my girlfriend's an Uber driver. Girls like I'm scorned, 11 and a half years old. Girls be scorned. And you, and so you no. know what you should have did? You know, you know what's not a coward? I like men that are men. He should have said. Do you know what I mean? He should have said, babe, let me borrow your car. I'm going to get my kids. That's what he should have said. I mean, if he wanted to avoid That's this whole scenario. Did. He avoid the whole situation. Then he could have gone that babe, route. My, my baby mom is crazy. If, if she sees That's you. That's all well and good. And see, oh, There's yeah, no was, problem with oh, yeah, that. Spice it up. Oh, I mean, however he would have gone about it. It could have been a good idea to just leave her out of the scenario mm-hmm. altogether so that he wouldn't have to lie in the chance that one approached the other. That would have been smart. But being that one did, he should have just been truthful about it. That's the Uber driver out there. What are you, 11 and a half? Like, you can't tell your truth that you have the right to be living? You have the right to live that truth. Like, that's your girlfriend. That's your ex. You you have the right to do whatever you want to do without being fearful of what she's going to do to be vindictive towards you. Right. You have that right. So I think that it was a bit cowardly. And I think that it also could have been a bad decision. I don't know that I think that if I loved a man Mm -hmm. that I would let that ruin the whole relationship. But I do understand where she's coming from because I like a man's man. Like I like a man that does manly things. I don't like a man that does boyish things. It is such a turnoff for me as you know, well, what's a, what's a boyish thing? Like what's, what's boyish things before before we we, we get up out of here? What, what is boyish quote unquote boyish things to me? If you're grown, grown and you don't stand on your own two feet, and I'm not talking about I give an example. I'm not this this is an example. I like a man who stands for who he is and what he believes in. I like a man that's honest. I like a man that's loyal. I don't like a man that cowers and has to hide behind things or that has to hide behind lies to live their life. Comfortably. You should be comfortable doing what you have to do and what's appropriate to live your life the right way. Okay. And if you don't, then I look at you as a boy. 
Because that's what boys do. Boys lie. Boys aren't loyal. Boys hide. Boys don't feel good being themselves. They don't feel comfortable being themselves. Like you're trying to put something out there. You're trying to put a front. You're trying to put out a facade. Mm. If you're if you're putting out a facade, then to me, you're a boy. Mm. Men don't do that. Like when I okay. think of a man, I think of like my father. Okay. Like my father wasn't a liar. My father was a protector. He was a provider. He was an honest, upright person that had gotcha, integrity. Gotcha. And to me, that's mannish. Boyish is the opposite. Okay. So when I think of woman, I think of massage feet, massage my back at night, cook my food, make me a drink. That's what a woman is. Hold on a minute. Is that really what you... Let's just look me in the eye. Is that what you believe? That's what Because we're about to get into something right now. Well, I, I didn't say like, you. I'm just saying. I, I oh, wait, so, so I'm not a woman? <laughs> I didn't say nothing. It's got nothing to do with you. <laughs> You're not it's talking about me? So I'm not a woman? You want woman? me to stand on my I'm own not a woman? Feet? You want me to be real all day long? You yes, do I do want you to be real all day long. It shouldn't even be an option to not be real all day long. Well, shorty, go make me a mistake. I don't like people that lie. So shorty, go make me a mistake then. So hold on a minute. So for you... Now, you might just want to clarify yourself before we get into this long, I'm joking. Come on, unnecessary man. conversation. I'm, see, now, now if, I was, if I was lying, I would be, I would, if I was telling the truth, I would lie right now because I don't want to go down because that Because you'd road. be a boy. I'd be a boy. <laughs> you'd be a boy about I'd, it. I'd be a boy all day long <laughs> to avoid that <laughs> argument. But that's what I feel that is the beginning of what encompasses a man. Of course, there's other things, but it starts with that. What do you think encompasses a woman, well, honestly? Well, first of all... It, I mean, you, also, when you talk about a, a man, you got to talk about my, my man, Dingo. Stop it. If you're going to talk man, you got to no, talk man. No, because I think speeches. that there are men that are men that have little willies and they're still just I don't as know manly. Who that is. I don't and, know. They, and, and I'm sure that, that they're still. Here. That and I'm sure they're still as sexy. That ain't, that ain't no. Because that ain't sexy, family. sexy comes with personality and charm and charisma and who you are as a person. It doesn't just come down to what you're throwing out there as the obvious. I mean, I, I think some of the characteristics, what is it? Characteristics? I don't characteristics? know what a character, I think you mean characteristics. <laughs> what is it? What is it? Character, what? You said categories and then you changed it to categoristics. You know what I mean, damn it. Okay. Now, it's, it's similar to what you said. I, I think for a woman, I think it, first and foremost is loyal. Um, you, want a, you want a woman that's loyal. That's, that's woman. You want a woman that's honest. You want a woman that's truthful. Honest and truthful are the same. Stop trying to get your adjectives <laughs> in there. <laughs> and tell me what you think. I think, I think honest and stop biting truthful. off of my answer. No, I mean, but you went first. So I mean, that's what I can do. I think, I think smart, honest. I think loyal. I think um, sexy. That's a woman. So, so if you're not sexy, you're not a woman. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna withdraw the question. No, I'm just I, gonna withdraw the question. But I, I really, I think, I think honesty and loyalty is is one and two for me. Um, you having a hard time with this? The, I mean, those are the main ones for me. I mean, you want you want an honest woman and you want a loyal woman. Those two things can go over and can go over anything. So that's what you think encompasses a woman, a that's real it? woman, honesty, loyalty, and God. Those are the three things that encompass a woman for me. Like when I look at you, I think of an honest woman. I think of a loyal woman. I think of a God fearing woman, and then everything else is beautiful, smart. Okay, but, though, but what I'm saying is, I don't know that those other things are necessary. Like beauty right. isn't necessary. Do you know what I mean? Right. But when it comes to you, I mean the the, the two features that outside of those things are named is honesty and loyal and and God fearing. I mean okay. the fact that you you're loyal, and what I mean loyal is, you know. You can smack me in the face, but if somebody else smacks me in the face, you wild out. You know what I mean? Not to say you smack me in the face, but but that's never smacked him in the face. Back of the head a couple of times, but not the face. But those are the type of things that I feel like encompass a woman, that, and that's what I want. I want somebody that's going to be honest to me, honest with me, regardless of what goes on in this world, and also loyal to me, no matter what goes on in this world. Those are the two most two important things. I mean, looks always fade. You know, um, beauty fades. I mean, don't wish that on me. I didn't. I didn't say. I, mean, I don't want that to happen. I didn't say. I didn't say that. Okay. You said always. I'm going to try to defy that. I said that. You just got your booty back, so I'm excited about that. Wait, where, it went somewhere? Oh, you mean after the detox? After the detox, you oh, just yeah, got yeah, your yeah. booty back. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. so We're about to go do some back shots right now. No, we're not. So continue. But those are the two things that, that <laughs> are really, really, uh, you know, what I admire like about Like a good most. woman. Exactly. Okay, well, thank you. Um, So let's bring it back full circle. Okay. So you don't feel, even given everything that I said, you don't feel that that makes him a coward. 
I don't think it makes him. Man, that was a cowardly move. Okay, can we say this? Can we say? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, no, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Can we say that it was a cowardly mood, but it doesn't necessarily make him a make him a full blown coward? I agree with that. I agree with that. So because you know you don't know what he was thinking. He might have been thinking, "I want to." We know it. We know he was thinking. I was thinking, "I want to." I want to make sure I can see my kids, and he was trying to. Fuck the situation so he can see his kids. And yeah, it was a cowardly move, but it doesn't make him a coward. People do cowardly things sometimes. That doesn't make them a coward. So we can both agree that it was a bad decision. Absolutely, it was a bad decision. That given this experience, right? maybe he can learn from it and make better decisions in the future. Absolutely. So do you think that she should take him back? Yeah, I think she should give him a shot, give him a chance. I mean, it's about his kids. I mean, people do anything for their kids. They'll go, they'll lie, they'll steal, they'll cheat, they'll do things that they necessarily shouldn't do for their kids. And that's something that he did. And I say give the man another shot. I agree. So, Anonymous, we know where you're coming from. Right. But if he's as amazing as you, you say, he is. say he is, right, and you've been willing to go all the way out of your way to drop him off, pick him up, drop him off, pick him up, and go through all of this, and you said that your love life, life is good and obviously you enjoy his company, then maybe he's worth a second chance. Absolutely. That's our opinion. All right. Okay. All right, it's time to get up out of here. I'm hot, too. I don't know why we didn't turn the air conditioner on in here, but it's hot as a mother. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Revolt for uh, recording this. Ty, we hey appreciate guys. you guys. And uh, it's time to get up out of here, man. So we'll see you next week. Don't forget, November 3rd is the car show. Hopefully we get to see you guys. The whole family will be there. How can they there. get tickets? You can go to eventbrite.com, search DJ Envy, or go to my uh, Instagram page and click on the link, and you can definitely get your tickets that way. They're $20. At the end of this week, it won't be 20 anymore. So get your tickets right now. Hopefully I can't wait to see you guys. And we'll see you next week, all right? Yes. And you know what I want to talk about next week? What do you want to talk about A lot of people hit me about um, the girl that called the radio station and was contemplating suicide. Okay. I get a lot of people in my DMs that have those thoughts. Wanted to know what happened Well, not even know know what happened with her, but just has has those thoughts and don't know how to get out of that mind frame. And and it's very difficult for a lot of people. A lot of people are, are dealing with stress and not having jobs and not having enough money and can't pay for bills and having bad relationships. And they just don't know what to do and how to get out. So I just want to talk to them about uh, me feeling that dark and um, how I got out of that situation, how you helped me get out of that situation. So I want to talk about that next week. Okay, And maybe we'll get the girl on the phone too because I still speak to her uh, every other day just to check up on her and make sure she's good. Okay, And she would love to do that. All right, well, I'm DJ MV. And I am Gia Casey. And that was another edition of the Casey Crew. Toodles. Thanks again to Kind Snacks for supporting this week's episode of the KC Crew Podcast. Kind Kids Bars have 25% less sugar than the leading kids granola bar and come in flavor kids love, like chewy chocolate chip and chewy honey oat. Now that's a lunchbox win, right? Now to get 20% off your order of Kind Kids Bars, go to kindsnacks.com slash Crew and enter code Crew at checkout. That's K-I-N-D-S-N-A-C-K-S dot com slash Crew with code Casey Crew at checkout for this special offer. Just want to let you know, London loves them. That's right, Kind Kids Bars. Check it out.